Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. We learn in the scripture, especially in the passage of the Bible that we're studying now, that you and I are accountable for our actions. How we perceive things, the thoughts of our heart, and how we respond to the various situations that we find ourselves within. There is going to be a great day of judgment. And we want to go before that day with confidence, first of all, that our sins have been forgiven by the blood of Messiah. And secondly, having received this forgiveness and having become a new creation from that moment that we've believed, that we have become different. Different not just in the declarative sense that we become a born-again believer and follower of God, but that we behave differently. We begin to respond to the truth of Scripture. And the problem is, as we saw last week, Nebuchadnezzar wasn't putting truth into his life. God gave him great revelation, and he did not respond to it. So before we go any further, we need to ask ourselves a very important question, and that is this. Am I faithful to the things that God has revealed to me? Now, people are different. Some people God may, because they have been a believer longer, because of a greater hunger for the Word of God, whatever, they might know more spiritual truth than someone else. But the important thing is this. The spiritual truth that you have learned, no matter how simple it might be, are you adhering to it? Are you displaying it in your life? Are you faithful to it? Because here's what's going to happen. When we are faithful in the little things, God is going to trust us with more. And as we grow and mature, even if we begin at a very, very elementary beginning point, we're going to see that God is quick to grow us, to mature us, to bring about an exciting change in our life where we can be used in a mighty way for the things of God. This is what God wants to do with Nebuchadnezzar. And remember what we find here. We find in this passage of Scripture, go back to where we left off last week, Daniel chapter 4, very important chapter, Daniel chapter 4, and look with me, if you would, to verse 17. It says here, by a decree of the watchman, this thing was, was brought about, this word through the holy ones, that it would be established on account that all life would know something, that the Most High God, first of all, they need to know that there is a most high God secondly that he rules in the kingdom of the sons of man that is in humanity and to whom he delights he gives it and to the ones that are humble among men he establishes it over it so we find something humility which is seen in trust there's a biblical relationship between these two things humility and trusting when one is humble they will trust God when one is prideful they will reject God's authority they will not uh, rely upon the revelation of Scripture move now to verse verse 18 this is the dream Nebuchadnezzar speaking this is the dream that I have dreamed and I King Nebuchadnezzar and you Balthazar Tell to me this interpretation, its interpretation, so that all the wise men of the kingdom, that they could not tell me this 
interpretation. So you tell me it because all the wise men of the kingdom could not. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, he still calls these individuals wise men, sages. But what were they able to do? Absolutely nothing. Now, there is another very important aspect of this text. God is making a distinction between people who worship him like Daniel and people who are involved in idolatry, in pagan pursuits, things not based upon scriptural revelation, but the deceitfulness of man. And these individuals, make no mistake, these so-called wise men were deceivers. You're to see that they make many statements and they deliver on none of them. Well, so he says, Daniel, they couldn't make it known to me, but you make known its interpretation of this dream. But you, keep reading, verse, verse 18 he says, but you are able because in you is the spirit of a holy God verse 19 then Daniel he was astonished or amazed whose name was Belshazzar so Daniel he was amazed by things and for a, a few minutes literally it says for a, a hour or so his thoughts were were troubled within him it says and the king answered and said Belshazzar do not uh, be troubled by the dream and its interpretation. Now, here's what's happening. Nebuchadnezzar, he could see that Daniel discerned what was going to happen. That is, he knew the meaning of that dream. And he knew, Nebuchadnezzar, that that dream, the fact that he dreamt it, meant it had ramifications for him. And Daniel's expression how he looked, his response, and not saying anything for a while, Nebuchadnezzar knew that Daniel was, was uncomfortable about sharing the ramifications of this dream in the life of Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar, he says here, basically, you know, don't be troubled, don't worry, tell me the meaning of this dream. And Belshazzar answered and said, uh, sir, uh, this is the dream for your enemies, and its interpretation is for your opponents or your rivals. So what he's saying here is that this dream has implications for those who are opposed to you, your enemies and such. Now, this is an important statement. Why? Because Nebuchadnezzar needs to know there is opposition. And the only way that he can be successful if, if he's experiencing the success of God. See, here's the important truth. If you're going to have enemies, make sure that they are also the enemies of God. So that God will be your defense. That you will be on his side. And if you're on God's side, you're going to be on a winning side. So Daniel tells him in this way. This dream, well, it's a delight for your enemies and for your opponents. Verse 20. The tree that you saw that grew and was strong and whose height reached into the heavens, it says, and appeared over all the earth. He says, this is what I want you to see. This, this tree and its leaves, which were good, and its fruit, which were abundant, and nourishment, it had nourishment for all the, that was in it, all that was in the world. And the beasts of the field, they dwelt underneath it, and the birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches. So he repeats it. Why? What's the reason why he repeats this dream? Because he wants Nebuchadnezzar to understand that he was listening, he heard, and he knew what this dream was that he was very attentive and his interpretation is based purely upon what this dream was, what he heard from Nebuchadnezzar. Keep reading. He says in this passage, verse 22, you, O king, have grew up, you have become powerful, and you have become great and abundant, 
and this kingdom of yours is what he's saying. You have become reached into the heavens and your your government has arrived to the ends of the earth, this expansiveness. So what he's saying to him is this tree, it reflects you and your kingdom. Verse 23, whereas the King Saul, a watcher and a holy one coming down from the earth and said, cut down the tree and destroy it. But the stump of its root in the land, leave it, fasten it and bind it with iron and copper and in the grass of the field it shall be. And from the dew of the heavens, it shall become wet. And with the beasts of the fields, it shall be its portion unto that these seven epochs of time pass over it. So here again, he's saying, you are this tree. And I've heard everything that you've said. And now I'm going to give you the interpretation of it and its relevance for your life. Now, let's just stop for a moment and learn a very important principle. When God gives prophecy, he gives it because it has far-reaching implications, meaning this. Prophecy is always about God's moving, working to establish his kingdom. Prophecy is always related to God's program for establishing his kingdom. So the more that we understand prophecy, the more that we study it and apply those truths to our life, the better prepared we're going to be for the kingdom of God so that we can live a kingdom life even now in this generation, in this age. So this is part of what the scripture is revealing as well. Move, if you would, to the next, next section. Notice what it says. He speaks and he says, this is the interpretation, it's interpretation, O king. The edict of the Most High has come upon my, my Lord, the king. And this word Lord means, sir, it's just a term of, of respect for an individual. So he says, the edict, the judgment, the, the decree from the Most High has come upon you, O king. And why is that so important? Well, it's to tell the reader, there is a judgment day. Sooner or later, we will find that the decree of God, his response to our life, what we have done with scriptural truth, we are going to find that his decree is going to meet our existence. And the question is, are we ready for it? Now, many times in our life, God gives us samples of that. We go through a situation, there's a period of time in our life where God is trying to teach us, communicate to us what we should be doing. He's calling us to repentance, and this is exactly what this, this dream and its implication is for Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 25, he says, they will drive you or cast you from the midst of human beings and with the beasts of the field will be your dwelling place. And as an ox, uh, they are going to feed you grass and from the dew of the heavens, you will become what? To seven epochs of time shall pass over you. Then there's an important truth. Notice what he says. At the end of that time, there's going to be something. Then you shall know the Most High God dwells in the kingdom of men. And to whom he delights, he gives it. So it's simply telling him, you have to go through this in order for you to understand the authority of God in this world. So let me deal with another important question, and that is this. Nebuchadnezzar is going to suffer a great loss. He's going to go through seven years of what we could say is, is a form of insanity. He is going to lose his mind. He is going to be banished from his palace. 
from all role as king. He is going to live as a wild animal. He is not going to even know enough to take shelter from when it rains. He is going to behave in this way for a purpose. Now, remember, seven years. What's seven? Seven is the number relating to holiness or purpose. This is coming about for a purpose. God is disciplining him in order that he might recognize and demonstrate the purposes of God in his life. So many times people go through things and they're suffering and that's that's a misfortune but they're going through this time of suffering for a purpose. All their thought is get me out of this. I don't like this. This is painful. This is discouraging. This brings despair. This hurt whatever those feelings are and and they are those feelings. But realize if we just focus upon what we're feeling We're going to miss out upon the lesson, the truth that God wants us to to understand. And not just to understand it, but to apply it to our life. This is why Nebuchadnezzar is going through all that he's going through. Look now to verse 26. And what is said concerning the, the leaving of the stump and the roots of the tree this is your kingdom and it will return and it will stand unto you when you know that in the heavens is the rule or the power the authority so he's going to be in this and God knows it's going to take him seven years before he realizes the truth that what that God taught him several years before this but that he has been ignoring so here again we have to ask ourselves what things are we ignoring in our life that God has taught us if we're not demonstrating the truth that God has revealed to us he is going to put us into a situation that we don't like you think Nebuchadnezzar likes this humiliation of being this powerful man being the one who's able to provide everything for the world being this strong individual but instead of saying you know what all of this has happened in my life because there's a God of the heaven and this God is supreme I'm just his servant instead of saying that realizing that living based upon that truth he took all of this pride and we're going to see as we go through the next several chapters that one of the problems with the leaders of these empires is that they do not want to recognize God. They want to live in the pridefulness of their heart. And you know what? If we're not careful, we'll live that same way. Now, we won't have all the things that Nebuchadnezzar and these other kings may have, but we'll make our own little kingdom. We'll have our own little sphere of influence of people that will try to make ourselves great before them. Whether it's a small town or in a company or in school or whatever it is, we'll want to rise up and magnify ourselves in that, that society. Whether it's a small society, a subset of some society or what, we'll do that. So what the scripture is saying is that is a dangerous way to live. It brings you into despair. It brings you into a situation where the normal things that a person should know, you're not going to realize them. Meaning this, pride injures our human intellect. It makes us, in the end, a very foolish individual. So he says here, you're going to be like this until you know, look at the end of verse 26, until you know that in the heavens is the authority, verse 27. Therefore, the king, if my counsel has found favor before you, he says, if you believe this, he says, this is what I recommend you do. Redeem your sin with righteousness and your iniquity with uh, uh, forgiveness or, or kindness to the, the afflicted ones or the poor ones. What he's saying is this, if you believe this is true, you need to do something. You need to begin to reflect justice, kindness, righteousness, mercy. All of this is found in these two words that are given here. 
that, that Daniel says. But the question is, is Nebuchadnezzar going to do that? He says, you need to, if, look at the end of verse, verse 20, 28, he says, in order that your tranquility, and this is the wholeness of your mind, mind might be lengthened, verse 28. And all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar, meaning this is going to happen, just like Daniel says. Verse 29, at the end of 12 months. Now, why 12 months? Well, here again, 12, what should come into our mind? The 12 tribes of Israel. God is doing this in the end to bless Israel. Why? Because if Israel is not a recipient of God's blessings, neither will the rest of the world. This is so Nebuchadnezzar can understand God wanted to move in his life. God brought Daniel before him. God brought this situation where Nebuchadnezzar had a resource of exiles from Judah in order that they might learn and teach him about the God of Israel. So he says, at the end of 12 months, as he was, was walking in his upper changer, chamber of his, your Bible probably says palace. I would argue that it's a word that has religious spiritual overtones in his sanctuary, in some pagan shrine that he had within his kingdom, which is in Babylon. Notice what happened. Verse, verse 30. The king answered and said, now he learned a message. But after a year had passed, 12 months, Notice how, because there was no immediate outcome of that dream, he kind of forgotten that. Instead of being humble, instead of being one who recognizes God in his life, God's authority, notice what he says. There is not in Babylon any greatness which I have not built, built uh, to be a house for my kingdom. And in the abundance of my power, I have done this for the glory of my honor or for the honoring of my glory however you want to translate that so what does he do he looks at this kingdom and what do we learn about this kingdom it's a very massive one it is powerful it is at the center of all the societies of the world it is vast in its influence and nebuchadnezzar is saying i'm the one who has built this this couldn't be done without my power. And through it all, who should get glory for it? It should honor my glory. So he is living and speaking in pride. Verse, verse 31. And why this word was still in his mouth of the king, a voice was heard from the heavens. And to you it is being said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, for your kingdom is removed from you. So there was this pronouncing, they said from the heavens, this voice was speaking, that your kingdom is removed from you. Now notice something. God is able, like that, to bring a change. To take away or to give. Think about this. Nebuchadnezzar, I'm going to do what? I am going to uh, lose my mind like that. And I'm going to go out and live like an animal in the, the woods, in, the, in nature. And I'm not even going to know enough to come in out of the rain. And I, is that what is going to happen to me? I don't believe he thought it was a possibility. And he didn't see any of it happening during those 12 months. No changes. See, sometimes God moves in a very abrupt manner. Manner without any types of evidence or signs. Sometimes... It's a slow progression, but not always. In Nebuchadnezzar, the change came in one day instantaneously. Verse now, verse 32. And he was cast from the midst of men, and we find that with the beasts of the fields was his dwelling place. And grass as an ox, they fed it to you. And for seven uh, epochs of time, Pass over him until he came to uh, his senses that the Most High God rules 
in the kingdoms of the sons of men, meaning in humanity, and he can give it to whomever he pleases. Verse 33. At that hour, that very hour that he came to that, the word was fulfilled in Nebuchadnezzar. And it was cast, he was cast from the midst of human beings. And it says, uh, grass like an ox he ate. And from the dew, from the dew of the heavens, he was made wet. Until we find that his hair grew as feathers, the feathers of an eagle. And his fingernails also grew and they become like claws of a bird. And it wasn't until the end of those days that were lifted up that I, Nebuchadnezzar, my eyes towards the heavens. And it says, my knowledge was restored to me concerning this most high God. And it says that he has blessed uh, uh, for for always for always and is given and I gave to him he says I blessed him uh, the most high God who lives forever and I gave him praise and glory to the God who his kingdom is forever and his administration is from generation to generation so here everything as Daniel says has come about we see that in actuality, what has been promised has happened. And what does that tell us? A very simple truth. God is faithful. What this should cause us to do is to realize that everything in this book is going to be. There's not some prophecies are going to be fulfilled, others are not. It's a scenario, maybe this scenario, maybe that. No. Everything written in this book is true. And I can promise you this. That unless we take this book to our life and fill our hearts and our mind with the revelation of the scripture, if you fail to do that, you will be eternally disappointed, dejected that you've made that mistake. Even if you're a believer, many believers, they, they read this book, but they don't put it into their life. No, we need to be people in order to be spared from eternal regret that we do something, that we make the right choices in our life, that we take seriously the truth of God and we apply it to our life. Nebuchadnezzar, he didn't have to go through this if he was humble enough to recognize God and if he didn't live in pride, so he made the choice. It's like I've said, you can do it the easy way, God's way, or you can do it the hard way, your way. Let's make a wise decision. Well, I'm out of time until next week when we continue on and complete this fourth chapter of the book of Daniel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.